If you can, give me a wave or a shout or a something. That means you can. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. It is an absolute pleasure to be here today in this great city of Tel Aviv. Uh, this dynamic and cosmopolitan city has been a holiday home for me and my family for as long as I can remember. And I take great joy in seeing how my children have learned so much about their culture and their heritage and their history, and also the world at large here. And forgive me, because I am a very proud mum, so I just had to get one photo up of my kids right at the beginning. Come on for my kids. Thank you. And it's for this reason that my husband and I have had such a lifelong relationship with Israel, and why we take such great pride in the entrepreneurial drive of this startup nation. Now, moreover, Facebook also has very strong ties with entrepreneurs in Israel, and we intend to double down on that investment over the years to come. And today, I want to explain why Israel is important to us and what we believe that other countries can learn from this startup nation and how Facebook can be an active partner to innovative companies in innovative countries. Israel's success in technology startups is truly extraordinary. And the city of Tel Aviv is ranked second in the world to Silicon Valley as a home for great tech startups. Just think about companies like Wix.com, 888, Polarium, Platica, Fever, Viber, Eat With, Playtech, and so on and so on. The list is literally endless. And back in 2009, there were 63 Israeli companies listed on the Nasdaq. And that was more than all of continental Europe, China, India, Japan, and Korea. Quite an extraordinary fact. And these healthy IPOs have replenished and deepened the pool of venture capital money, which makes Israel number three in terms of countries with access to venture capital. Now, back in the Facebook world, half of our top 10 grossing gaming partners in Europe are based here in Tel Aviv. And this afternoon, not long from now, we're hosting our largest developer event ever organized outside the US, with over 650 developers scheduled to attend. Good number. Only yesterday, as I hope you've seen in the news, we announced the, that Anava would be joining Facebook. They're gonna remain here in Tel Aviv in what becomes Facebook's first office in Tel Aviv. Thank you. <laughs> now, we are absolutely overjoyed to have the incredibly talented Onavo team working with us. Their skills and the technology they've developed are going to help us on our mission to develop and access, give access to more people to the internet by developing better, more efficient mobile products. And in just 70 years, Israel has gone from a country dominated by agriculture to one of the most industrious, innovative countries on earth, despite the regional turmoil. It is a story worthy of the scriptures, a story of human ingenuity, a story of triumph over adversity. But there is no chance in this story and no divine intervention. Instead, it is a story that could be retold and replayed and replicated in other cities and countries around the world if politicians and policymakers are prepared to take a strategic view of the state. And to my mind, there's four pillars that underpin the story of this startup nation. The first pillar is place. Place matters. Too often commentators look at the rapid advances in communication and infer that this is the death of distance. I think that's an increasingly out-of-date observation. If anything, I think the position of cities has been strengthened by technology, contradicting the early thesis of fu futurologists like, I don't know, Alvin Toffler, who predicted that technology would make cities increasingly irrelevant as people would work from home. Now, while my boss Mark Zuckerberg, it's true, did invent Facebook from his dorm room, he only made it a business by moving out to the global hub that is Silicon Valley. As Mark learned, place matters. Cities matters. So policy makers need to think about how they can make their cities attractive to entrepreneurs and to investors. 
And this brings me to my second pillar, human capital. Cities with a large stock of skilled labor are likely to enjoy an increasing economic returns. And this tiny country of Israel is abundant in human capital. It's ranked second in the world for the availability of qualified scientists and engineers. And the Harvard economist Ed Glazer has long argued that human capital stock is vital in driving growth. And he does that with a tale of two cities, not Paris and London, but Buenos Aires and Chicago back in the 1870s. Now, I don't know if you know much about the 1870s, but back then, both these two cities had a lot in common. Their GDP per capita was the same, and the same industry dominated both cities. Money came from meat. Now, farmers on the plains transported capital, cattle for slaughter on new railroads, and they sent them to the cities for slaughtering and then to onward distribution. And in the case of Chicago, it was to the great cities of the eastern seaboard, and in Buenos Aires for export to Europe. Same GDP, same industries, but completely different outcomes. And Glazer asked himself a simple question, why? Well, his hypothesis was that Argentina's history of political instability would be the most variable outcome on understanding the difference in outcome. But he was wrong. Out of all the variables, the most important variable was the human capital stock. Now, both cities in 1870 were magnets for immigration. But all immigration, Glazer found, is not created equally. The genius of Chicago was to attract a disproportionately large share of skilled German labor, while Buenos Aires attracted low-skill agricultural labor from southern Europe. And this gave Chicago a racing start. And with the miracle of compounding, Chicago quickly established a lead over Buenos Aires that the Argentinians could not recover from. And this skilled immigrant labor is a major, growth of, a major source of Israel's growth. Russian emigrees from the former Soviet Union brought great technical and engineering skill to Israel. And this is a crucial part of the success story. And that's why we at Facebook are taking a leading role in the US in the debate around immigration and the importance of making the US an attractive home to skilled immigrant labor. And it's also why, at a corporate and an individual level, we are so supportive of investment and reform in public education as we seek to upskill all human capital stock. And just as is done here, in the Tel Aviv Jaffa municipality, which invests significant resources to enhance scientific education in local kindergartens and schools. All of the city schools are connected to the web and operate a number of e-learning programs. So attracting talent and investing in that talent is crucial in understanding Israel's success. Now, somewhat controversially, I'm going to turn to my third pillar. I think the role of the military is underplayed in understanding the success of Israel, but crucial to understanding the country's success. Compulsory service throws together men and women, Sephardi Jew with Ashkenazi Jew, liberal with conservative, gay with straight. And you know what? In that type of environment, you've just got to get on with it, or it's going to be a long, tough couple of years. What it does is breed adaptability and resilience. And adaptability and resilience are the most important character traits in an entrepreneur. Now be very clear, I am not advocating the return of compulsory military service globally, but I am arguing for greater creativity in education curricula about finding ways to make children more agile, more resilient, and more open to others. Closely related to this point is the fourth and final pillar, the hack culture. Israel, like Facebook, has a belief in the hackathon, the importance of bringing people together to solve problems, a belief in the power of experimentation, a belief in the power of failure. At Facebook, we are very candid about our failures, and we encourage all of our colleagues to be honest about stuff that isn't working, because it's only by failing that we learn. Here in Israel, you share that mentality, and it's manifested in so many ways, like your light touch in corporation, 
and your liquidation legislation. The single most important asset of an entrepreneur is time, and you make it as easy as you can to open a business and to shut it. And bankruptcy in Israel does not have the same negative connotations as it does in Europe. And that's probably why Israel is more innovative than Europe. The resolute will of a people who can literally make a desert bloom is something that we all admire at Facebook and something that we want to support. Because at Facebook, what we can offer entrepreneurs is the most scalable marketing platform the world has ever seen. A platform by which Q innovation developed by a small, dedicated group of Tel, Tel Aviv engineers can be shared with a teenager in Tokyo or Treviso. Let me give you an example of the power of Facebook to scale innovation. Facetune, a fun, powerful, and frankly quite remarkable photo editor. It's a little bit like having a professional but simple desktop publishing solution right on your mobile device. It was developed in here, in Israel, by five brilliant entrepreneurs who had spent time both in academia and in industry. Built on the iOS platform, the LT Engine is a state-of-the-art processor, giving users the power to manipulate and play with pictures and videos. You know what? It was a good technology. And then the team began to market the product on Facebook, and it became a global success story. Five guys from Israel, using our platform, took an app that was 283 in the Apple App Store to number two in just five days. And the app stayed high in the Apple Store, so much so that this company now has 60% of its sales outside of the US. Israeli talent on the world stage. Let me give you another example of what happens when Israeli smarts meet Facebook scale. An Israeli company that is just four years old is now a truly disruptive force in the world of gaming. The Herzliya-based Polarium now employs 450 people. Many global hits, Stormfall, Total Domination and Pirates, Tides of Fortune and Bug Wars. This developer allows Facebook players from over 170 countries to play and to interact online. And since its inception, 85 million people have played a Polarium game online, with over three million people playing every single day. Jobs created, wealth generated, Israeli talent on the world stage. And at Facebook, we like to think we've only just begun, and the same is true for the potential of Israel and its entrepreneurs. But this is about so much more than Israel and Facebook. And the case I want to make today in, is that in cities the world over, real wealth can be generated and jobs created if we simply learn the lessons from Israel. Number one, understanding that place matters means that governments need to do more to liberate cities to attract and retain talent. Number two, making sure our governments and businesses do as much to attract and build human capital through skilled immigration and education reform. Number three, building tolerance and character by ensuring that our children are exposed to difference and difficulty. Number four, teaching our children that failure matters and is important in order to learn. Israel's story matters. But hopefully I've made clear how the stories of Facetune and Polarium show how Facebook matters in connecting great entrepreneurs with a world of possibility. Thank you very much.